In today's video, I'm finally gonna set up my UNS Foresta 35E. It's basically like an all-in-one paludarium. It comes with built-in filtration, it has this cascading water feature, and it comes with a mist maker as well. So I'm excited, let's get started. So let's do a quick unboxing first. I've had the Foresta for a few months already, and now that the new studio is done, I can finally set it up. Inside the box we of course have the Paradarium, and this thing is heavy. It's 35 by 35 by 45 centimeters, and made from 6 mm optic white glass. Besides the Paradarium you get a foam mat for underneath the Foresta, a manual, 6 plant pads, and in this white box you have a glass cover for the filtration compartment. Then in the back you'll find a roll of green thread, a mist maker, the return pump, and of course some filter media. Now setting it up was pretty simple. First up is the foam mat. I do wish they didn't roll it up because that made it a bit difficult to get it perfectly underneath the glass. But after you've done that, you can prep the filtration compartment. So the return pump sits on the right, the mist maker goes in the middle, and then you simply cover everything with the glass lid. Lastly, I added the plant pads, and then I filled it up with water to do a test run. So the only thing that the Foresta doesn't come with is a light. Now I had a few options, I still had some lights lying around and I decided to go with the Freshwater Blade from Aquilumination. I've had this light for a while, really like it, it's app controlled and everything, grows plants very well. And I like it on this setup because it's quite a thin light, so it doesn't really take away from the Foresta itself. I mean it's already 40 centimeters high, so if you put a very big light on top, it just becomes very tall, you know, that's kind of what I wanted to avoid. But yeah, that's all the equipment, so we can now start scaping. So I'm going to drain the water, I'm going to shut off the pump, shut off the mist maker, and then we can begin with the hardscape. Okay, let's talk about the plan for the setup. I have two types of hardscape. We have some really nice branchy spider wood. I got three pieces of this. And I also have some really nice elderly stones. These have a lot, of, a lot of detail on them, some white veins that just look really good. So I'm thinking to combine a few pieces of spider wood, I'm gonna make it look like it's one piece. Have it sort of coming out of the center. And then if it's one piece, I can also hopefully take it out again if I have to do some maintenance, you know? And then with the rocks, I just wanna make the bottom section just look, look very nice, you know? I don't think there'll be a lot of light because there'll probably just be a lot of shadow from the wood. So this will just be cosmetic sand, some gravel and the rocks. Okay, I think I'm onto something. Quite like how this looks at the moment. And it was not really intentional, but I think we have a bit of a triangle going on again. So we have the tallest tip over there. It goes straight down to the one that's sticking out of the glass over there. And then we have the, yeah, the, the one on the left. So it kind of has a triangle, you know? I quite like it. Let's see if we can glue these three pieces together so we can take it out as one as well. Okay, I think that worked. Just made a few connections with the liquid type super glue and the cotton pads. Always works very well. But now let's do the real test. Let's see if I can take the wood structure out and put it back in without breaking it. So here we go. One big piece. I think it's solid. And in. It's also doable. And of course you have to be careful and I mean it's easy right now but once we have all the plants in it might be a little bit more difficult. I also don't know if I really have to take it out the wood if I want to do maintenance. I mean I'm not very experienced when it comes to paludarium but it's just a nice idea that the wood is just one solid structure you know. So let's start yeah let's start keeping the bottom area now. I actually quite like how that looks already. A little close-up of the bottom section. There's a little bit of open space on this side over here. I have one more rock. Could place in there, but I know we could also just add some plants in there, I don't know. I mean the right side will be mostly blocked by the uh, by this gram over here, so you're not gonna see too much of that. But I think from the front it looks really good already. So I think the next step is to add in some sand and some gravel. Um, I'm not gonna use any aquasol in here because 
there will not be many plants in the bottom area maybe just a little bit of moss and some small bush of llama or something like that so I just turned on gravel for the gravel i have this rio zingu from nanawa and i'm thinking for the sand to use this wheel heaven sand really light because the bottom area is going to be very dark so a nice light sand I would say that's the hardscape done guys that was really simple just three pieces of wood then a couple of rocks some sand some gravel and it already looks nice you know so right now we could start planting it but i think it would be nice if we just fill up with water start the pump again start the mist maker again and just kind of see how it looks with just the hardscape I am really happy with this is going guys, it's starting to look really really good. It's also a good idea to add in the water because now I can kind of see which parts of the hardscape are above the water and which ones are below. It's nice to know that for when we, uh, when we are planting those areas, you know. The first area I want to start planting is the background. So we have to take out those um, moss sponges, whatever you want to call them, and attach moss to them. So I'm going to set up a little moss wrapping station here. So we got the sponges, got my scissors, and we have the UNS Foresta plant thread. So the only thing that's still missing is moss. I'm going to take moss from my UNS 60U because the thing is starting to become a little bit overgrown. Well, not the crypt, but the, the moss is starting to get really big. So I'm going to take some moss from there, use it to wrap these sponges. Hopefully that's going to work. Okay, first time doing it, so don't make fun of me if it doesn't go completely as it should. So I'm just going to start taking some moss and just kind of like spreading it out. I think we just want a thin layer and hopefully it will grow thicker as time goes by. And I'm using weeping moss for this, by the way. Okay, I think that's enough. So let's start wrapping. First one, it's not super tightly wrapped, but enough to hold the moss in place. Here we go, six moss sponges all done. That was actually really easy. And in case you guys were wondering how much moss I used, so the first big patch that I grabbed from the tank, that was enough to cover three and a half uh, sponges. So I had to grab a little bit more. Okay, that's all six of the moss patches or sponges in place. Of course, it looks a little bit silly right now, but once the moss starts growing, it will look like one big green moss wall. Can't wait for that. I'm going to take a little bit more moss and just kind of like lay it on top of the sponges because at the moment it's completely bare. I think uh, that will just kind of speed up the process as well. Okay, the moss wall is done, the hardscape is back in, it's looking really good, but now it's time to add in the rest of the plants. And of course, as always, I have beautiful plants from Danola Plants. They're my main channel sponsor, I've been working with them for a very long time, very grateful to have them. So I got a bunch of different Anubias, we have the Anubias Nana Kirin, um, the regular Anubias Nana Bonsai, I uh, have some small bush of Landra, I have some Lobelia, and I also have some more moss from my tank. So that's what we're going to start with, maybe I'll add some more plants later on, but Let's start with this first. Okay, plants are prepared. Most of these plants do require quite a lot of humidity. So they're gonna, gonna either go on top of the moss wall or um, in the water section. And I'm thinking for the majority of the hardscape, maybe I have to go to the garden center and pick up some plants from there because otherwise it's gonna be very bare, you know? Yeah, I'm very new to this whole polydarium game, so I think I'm going to have to go to the garden center as well. Okay. 
Okay, as fast forward, it's actually been two weeks since I finished planting the Foresta. And I've been away the entire time. So what I did is I've covered the front panel with plastic wrap just to keep some of the humidity inside, you know. I didn't want to have the mist maker running 24-7 while I was not here because it also evaporates a lot of water. So yeah, covered it with plastic wrap and it's done really well. The moss wall has grown in completely. Uh, Lubelia has grown in a lot. Unfortunately, some of the small boosts melted, the small um, boost needle leaf. So I'm going to have to remove some portions. Um, the only thing right now, in my opinion, it still looks a little bit boring. Not boring, but just a little bit empty. You know? it, it needs a little bit more color as well. So I just went to the shop and picked up some plants. I have some Fitonia here. I have a plant that's called Earthstar, if I have it correctly. I just looked up those names. And I have something called Cinnamon Hoya. It's kind of like a creeping fig. And while I was at the shop, I also picked up some inhabitants for the underwater section. I'm currently trip acclimating them, so I'll show you those in a minute. But let's quickly clean those plants, see if we can add them in, and I think that will look a lot better. Okay, that's all the new plants added in as well. Already looks a lot better. We have some nice color going on. Yeah, looks really good. So now we can add in the, the inhabitants. So of course, it's just a very small water volume, so it's not really suitable for fish, but we can definitely add in some shrimp. So I was at the shop and they had some really nice, high quality crystal red shrimp. I tried crystal red shrimp before, didn't really have a lot of luck with them, but in this polydiary, I'm actually using RO water, so it should be a little bit more suitable for them. So I got 10 of them. So let's add them into the uh, polydiary. 